When certain people don't know what to say, when they don't know what to call something, they will use a term and they will use it in a way that kind of invokes some type of negativity without their apparently being at all conversant with what the word means. You might use populist, nativist, uh, someone who speaks to a nationalist. All of, all of these words and terms apparently are being used to provide the connotation that these are, in effect, synonyms for something that is deleterious to an organized uh, society and democracy. You know, fascist, nationalist. Now, that's not to say that there have not been a spate of individuals and organizations throughout history who indeed shared some of those terms. But is it possible for you to be a nationalist and not be draconian, not be totalitarian, not be communist, not be anarchic? Is it possible? Of course it is. Of course it is. And what's interesting to note is that this reminds me years ago of a, a story a little apocryphal, involving Claude Pepper and George Smathers. And it was right around the panhandle of Florida in the 50s, I believe. And it is, it, it's, the, it's the artful use of a particular term that is fascinating because what it does is it implies that you know something about it when in fact you don't. What am I talking about? What does this mean? Where am I going? Well, let me explain to you. But first, oh yes, 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 yes. First, a word from our sponsor. A new study reveals nearly 50% of adults rated vision loss as the worst possible health outcome. Those questioned voted that losing vision would be worse than losing a limb, their hearing, speech, or memory. Most adults would rather lose their memory than their eyesight. When your vision suffers, your productivity, driving, and quality of life all suffer with it. Many notice their eyesight worsen as they age and assume it's not. This is wrong. The reason your eyesight is worsening is likely not because of your age, it's most likely because of your supplementation. The things you need for healthy vision cannot be produced by the body. You must be supplementing them into your diet, otherwise your eyesight suffers. You need eye vitamins. And the eye vitamins you want to maintain and support healthy vision are in this amazing new pill. This product helps protect the eyes against the dangerous blue light emitted from phone and computer screens, while simultaneously supporting visual contrast, eye processing speed, glare recovery, cognitive function, and more. Plus, the ingredients in it are the most potent and purest around thanks to their strict quality standards. This product is notorious for selling out, and it's often unknown how long until they become available again. Luckily, they're available as of this video presentation. I'm teaming up with the creators behind these vitamins so you can get your vision strengthened and receive up to 51% off your own order by clicking the link below or simply going to visionwithlionel.com. Order today to get yours delivered to your doorstep today. Since I have been involved in the world of professional opinioneering or opinionating or whatever it is that I'm doing here, I have told people that there are terms that are used that nobody really can understand or explain. Can you define for me operationally what communism is? Fascism versus socialism versus Marxism? Can you, can you tell me the various subtle gradations between those? Well, years ago, this reminds me, there was a story I always heard growing up in Florida, not Florida, but Florida. It was George Smathers, who was, by the way, JFK's best friend, was running for Senate against Claude Pepper. They called him Red Pepper because they thought he was a, a communist or something, and he wasn't, of course. But in any event, they called him Red Pepper. And he would always say, bur, 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 bur. anyway, they, they, they called him Senator Pepper, even though he was in the House for most of his life. And the story goes that at the time of the, <coughs> excuse me, at the time of the various campaigns, Smathers would be around the panhandle of Florida, where people were purportedly not necessarily the most facile with 
terms they did not necessarily understand. And he, you, he said, now I don't know whether you all knew this or not, but I'm getting worried here on, on good authority that Claude Pepper's sister is a thespian from New York, no less. And she matriculates. Well, supposedly, they say, a thespian, well, that's what I hear. I, you know, far be it for me to pass on, you know. Well, <clears throat> ap apocryphal to be sure. We always heard when we were kids years ago, there was, growing up, it was a strange, we, we had this one kind of a friend of, from the family who was always warning us, you know, be careful if you go to the f carnival. Be be careful if you go here and there. He said, you better be careful, wife. Well, will. You better watch out for them morphodites. I said, a morphodite? What is a morphodite? What, is, what does that mean? Hermaphrodite? This is before anything. Never got an answer. Wasn't sure what it was. Just sounds evil, especially the way he said it. It was like, oh, my God. I've got to be looking out for something. I don't even know what it is. I say the old Joe, you know why I do this? Or this. Money? No. This. We use these terms, nationalism, populism, nativism, to connote, to convey, to suggest something that I hereby suggest to you is not in and of itself problematic in the least. In the least. And what, what is the most fascinating to me is that you would think by this point people would have caught on to it. They've said, you know what, I think I know what this is about. And whenever you have, oh my God, anybody who is involved in anything involving Italy, anybody who talks about values, anybody who says, if you're Georgia Maloney, 45 years old from Rome, <clears throat> from the party, the Brothers of Italy. Oh, my God. Oh. That, that sounds scary, doesn't it? And this being the centenary of the March on Rome, people will say immediately, <coughs> excuse me, fascisti, you know, fascist, Mussolini. Now, I'm not going to tell you that I am here to act as a spokesperson for on, on behalf of Meloni, or that I'm here to explain to you what she is and what she isn't. I'm not, I, that, that's, that's not my point. But what we are seeing here is a couple of things. First, the clarion call, call, the sentinel has been sounded, the klaxon noted, where people are coming out of the woodwork to say that this is yet again an example, a harbinger of, of, again, of this totalitarian right-wing lunacy. Merely, merely, unless there's something, she, you know, she might have said something which is absolutely, positively replete with references to, to uh, you know, something that is indeed fascistic. I don't think so, but just saying. But what you are seeing clearly is this convergence, this idea that when you say things about your culture, your country, your traditions, your nation, your nationality, your language, your borders, anytime, anytime you make any reference to anything, you can be assured that there are certain people, the usual suspects, who will come out of the woodwork and accuse you of actually advocating either some version of national socialism or some type of tyranny or some something. What's also interesting to note, and you know what I'm talking about, and I speak about this on my private channel, but if you really want to know where there is absolutely this horrible anti-human, anti- governmental uh, draconian examples of, of, of and I've got to be careful because as you know this is a platform that is very sensitive uh, if I were to say something that is at all controversial 
because I've been, you know, I've been told this, right? I've been told this. Uh, we, we, we have been de demonetized and demonized, but not demoralized because I'm controversial. I talk about things that are controversial. And, and this somehow proves injurious to people. How? I don't know. But, 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 there are places where the worst of the worst of the worst exist. And I know where they are. And I've been telling you about this the whole time. But in the meantime, it would behoove you greatly to look up these words, find out what they are. And look at it. Remember, this is October, is the centenary of the March on Rome. Go back and look at the history. What is fascist, fascisti? What are the fascists? Where, where is this from? What is this symbol? What does it connote? What does it denote? Is, is anybody suggesting an absolutely fascistic change of government? Or is law and order somehow being subsumed under the rubric of such? That's the interesting aspect. That's the part which I find to be so thoroughly, I don't want to say amazing, because everything today is amazing. So anyway, you think about that carefully. Be very careful. Be very parsimonious. Very clinical when you append appellations and the like and labels to certain political ideologies when in fact most of the time it's somebody who just says I want law and order God forbid all right my friends have a great and a glorious day please like this video please subscribe to this channel and please if you could and you would brighten my northern sky as a great Nick Drake would intone but comment as you see fit